What's going on now, Battlefielders? My name is Ponin. If you're like me, you're kind of on the fence about Hardline. You're like, I don't know if I want to get this. It's not traditional Battlefield. I played the beta. And if you were like me, you probably didn't do your research, try to find out exactly what was new. And I wanted to kind of put together a video telling you about how I think this is going to be the most competitive Battlefield yet to date. And some other features that you may or may not have known about this game. So it's going to be kind of a cool little burrito of awesome things just stuffed inside of it. So that's that. Also, I want to remind you guys that if you are looking to purchase this game for PC, there's a website down below. You can pick it up for about $35, $40. You can pre-order it in advance and save yourself 20 or 30 bucks. And that's going to be easier for some people who are like, I don't know if I want to spend 60 bucks on this. But something like 35 or 40 will be much easier for some people and if you want to check that out go for it you can also use code pwnstar i believe it has to be in all caps and you can get three percent off your purchase too um so feel free to look into that if you'd like to again i use it personally save lots of money doing it i pre-order every one of my pc games on there and uh just putting that out there again so i i feel like that i need to explain some of the best stuff first generally i save the best for last when i make these videos but some of the most important things to me are the new competitive aspects and game types that are coming to Hardline. Something that I have not seen from Battlefield, or at least they've tried before, uh, and they just have not had that that extra push to make these things that exciting. Now, one of the two new game types is called Rescue. Rescue is one of two competitive modes, and it's go time for the fuzz. You're a SWAT operative tasked with saving innocent lives from the hands of criminals. Lead your team carefully into dangerous hoods and get the hostages back to safety. Watch your step. There are no second chances in this mode. Now, what this means is it's the objective of the law enforcement to rescue two hostages that are being held in two separate locations by the criminals. Alternatively, the law enforcement can also eliminate all of the opposing side's players. As for the criminals, their objective is to prevent the law enforcement from reaching the hostages by eliminating them. This must all be done under three minutes or else the criminals will automatically win the match. The catch? Players from both teams have only one life. If they die, they have to wait and spectate the rest of the match. That is highly exciting, something we have not seen to this caliber. I'm used to seeing things like this in Counter-Strike and other games, but these are these things that you could eventually see becoming a main thing for them that will eventually put them into the spotlight for competitive play. And this is not even my favorite one. That one is absolutely amazing. But my favorite game type coming here is actually called Crosshair. This is the second competitive mode. In Crosshair, a former criminal turned state's witness is on the run from his former crew. The criminals are trying to erase the VIP's face from the world, while the cops are trying to get him out safely. Once again, there are no second chances. One death and you are out of the match. Now, according to this, Crosshair is a new game mode. Two teams of five race against a three-minute timer to either extract a player-controlled VIP at one of two designated locations as law enforcement or to eliminate either the VIP or all law enforcement as criminals. The game type features no vehicles with respawning disabled. The VIP himself is equipped with a heavy-duty pistol that can cause heavy damage towards criminals. Stealth becomes an invaluable tool in this game mode as the death of the VIP means an automatic loss for law enforcement. The VIP can also lead police to heavy weapon stashes for their advantage, forcing the criminals to act aggressively toward the opposing team. Why this excites me so much is because there was a game that I used to play back in the day. It's actually the game that introduced me and got me excited for modern sort of military shooters. It was a game called America's Army. They had a game type called Escort where there was one person randomly selected amongst the players that was this VIP. He could stay safe, play it smart, and sit back and let the rest of the team push up and maybe lock down a certain portion or route to get to the extraction zone. Maybe he'll make a rush and have the rest of the team distract and all the gunfight on the right side and make him think that he's that way being protected, and he's all alone with maybe one extra person protecting you on the left side. It's all about communication, and it is definitely one of the best game types I've ever played for competitive FPS. And I am super stoked for this. I had no clue these game types were even coming to the game. And that was just lack of interest in the game. Just I was expecting me to not like the game. This has got me so interested in this game. And I, just, I can't wait to see if the potential of this is going to grow. If there's going to be a competitive scene for these. And they definitely have value over things like Heist and Team Deathmatch. And I know Battlefield is known for being like known for the high player count sort of situations. This opens up an entire new area for them uncharted territory and that's why it makes it so amazing now other little things that i have noticed upon doing some research throughout this are pretty exciting too so i do want to repeat and make you guys understand that all of this information i had just recently discovered uh just trying to find out and looking up whether or not if rush would be in this game and it's not 
for those curious, Rush will not be coming back to Battlefield in Hardline, and that's kind of what Heist does. It's kind of like Rush, but it's all in one area instead of, I guess, converting to a new location after a set of MCOMs are down. Heist is kind of filling that void at having one solid location with various different routes for you guys to take. And upon finding out this information, I looked into other things, and there was something really, really cool about weapons. Players can also unlock a weapon license for faction-specific weapons after getting 1,250 kills with the weapon. Licenses allow players to use weapons for both factions, but the weapon is still restricted to its class, and each weapon requires its own license. So as an example, say the AK is exclusive for the criminals, but the moment that I get 1,200 150 kills with it I can acquire that license and then I can actually use it as one of the police officers so that's pretty exciting too another cool thing that I noticed and this was pretty interesting because at first I was kind of like I didn't like this idea upon playing the last beta that they had I was really upset I was playing conquest and it seemed like helicopters were in the air the entire time of the game I was getting mowed down it seemed like impossible they would seriously survive for minutes 10 minutes 20 minutes at a time and they were just so obnoxious I couldn't stand just like experience them whatsoever it really really frustrated me and now it's because RPGs and things like that are located on map they are on map battle pickups and I was kinda not against it and then I noticed something about this and it was pretty pretty exciting and information coming from them directly and I quote the other big change is more around explosives and some of the heavy duty weapons obviously with battlefield you have this really solid foundation of rock paper scissors gameplay the heavy weapons counter the vehicles etc there's a great balance that the team has created over the years. We wanted to include RPGs and mines, and we did, but people felt that it took away out of the fiction a little bit. That you could just load up a character and equip an RPG. So that wasn't an easy thing to get rid of because it's part of the balance. The design team came up with cool ideas based on that feedback. One is to have some of those more powerful weapons be pickups so it creates a secondary objective. Some of the modes, like in Hotwire, the RPG cache is one of the objectives. If you control that cache, your team has access to the RPG and that creates more interesting gameplay. We also came up with the notion of junk in the trunk. What if we allowed players to equip special items to their vehicles instead of their inventory loadout? It goes back to the movies where a bad guy pops open the trunk and grabs something big. When you play the game, if you set up your vehicle loadout to have a specific weapon in the trunk and you control that vehicle, you can use that item. So now you want to get a vehicle to access a specific weapon, which also fits the fiction better. So as much as I was like, eh, you know, it's just like it's red versus blue, they're actually trying to dive deeper into the criminals versus the cops, the good and the bad. And I think that was really, really interesting. I was exciting about that because it also does add that value to those vehicles. So I guess they're mixing things up and it looks like they're really listening to the feedback for the community. So with that, I'm excited for the game. Hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay. If you did, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for future Battlefield Hardline gameplay coming to you guys within the next couple weeks. I'm looking excited for it. And again, if you want to pre-order it, feel free to check it out on that website. If not, you can find it on their actual website and get it from Origin if you want. Take care, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys out there.